Well, here we go with lesson four, section 6.2, trigonometric functions of angles. So here's a little bit of what we're going to see today. We're going to talk about the fundamental identities. They're broken into three categories. The reciprocal identities, which you already know, the tangent and cotangent identities, and the Pythagorean identities, of which there are three of those. So we'll knock these out one at a time. So this came, should come as no surprise. Cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. Secant is the reciprocal of cosine. And cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent. Uh, those are the reciprocal identities. And that also leads into uh, the square is also true. So that the cosecant squared is equal to 1 over sine squared. Secant squared is equal to 1 over cosine squared. And cotangent squared is equal to 1 over tangent squared. Now, all I did was square both sides. That's, that's not earth shattering. Let's move on to the tangent and cotangent identities. And I, I'm going to set this up by asking you to draw a right triangle with the Pythagorean triple 3, 4, 5 as the sides. Obviously, the 5 is the hypotenuse. Uh, identify angle theta and make sure it's opposite the side that has a length of 4. There it is. Notice theta is across from the 4. And we're going to do three things. We're going to find the sine and the cosine, where they're going to divide sine by cosine. And then we're going to compare that to the tangent. And the hope being that the sine divided by the cosine is exactly the same as tangent. I think it will be. I've read the end of the book. Uh, this is review. Sine theta is opposite over hypotenuse. So in this case, that'll be 4 fifths. Cosine theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. In this case, that'll be 3 fifths. Let's move on to number two. Number two, I want to find sine divided by cosine. And when I do that, I take 4 fifths divided by 3 fifths, multiply by the reciprocal of the denominator, the fives cancel, and we get 4 thirds for sine divided by cosine. Now I just want to go ahead and find the tangent, back, go back to the triangle, find the tangent, and compare it. And if we look at tangent, we get 4 thirds. That's opposite over adjacent. And lo and behold, Sine divided by cosine is exactly the same as tangent, and that is the tangent identity. Therefore, tangent theta is sine over cosine. That is one of the basic identities in trigonometry. It's called the tangent identity. The cotangent identity would just be the reciprocal of that, where cotangent is cosine over sine. So here's uh, number two of those three points that we started out this section talking about. Uh, the tangent and cotangent identities. Tangent is sine over cosine, and cotangent would be the reciprocal of that, cosine over sine. And that leads to squaring both sides. You get tangent squared is equal to sine squared over cosine squared, and cotangent squared is equal to cosine squared over sine squared. And all I did was square both sides as we did in the previous one. Moving on to the third and final point um, of the fundamental identities, the Pythagorean identities. To set this up, we're going to go back to our 3, 4, 5 triangle. Notice theta is across from 4. I want to find sine squared plus cosine squared. Now, we already know sine and cosine. We're going to square them, add them up, and see what happens. Not the most difficult math in the world. 4 fifths squared is 16 25ths. 3 fifths squared is 9 25ths. And that comes out to be 25 over 25, which is 1. And that is our basic Pythagorean identity, that sine squared plus cosine squared is 1. That is really the basis uh, of trigonometry. And that is our Pythagorean identity, that sine squared plus cosine squared is 1. Now, we're going to get two more off of that, and each of those is going to produce two more. We're going to use algebra here to show you two more using this one, and then I'm going to use some division to show you two more Pythagorean identities. The base Pythagorean identity is sine squared plus cos cosine squared is 1. But using algebra, if I subtract sine squared from both sides, I get cosine squared equals 1 minus sine squared. Or if I go back to the original and I subtract cosine squared from both sides, I get sine squared equals 1 minus cosine squared. These three right here, the base and then the next two, we use these three probably more than any other of the identities uh, that I'm going to talk about today. Well, there's two more that come off of sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. So what we're going to do is divide uh, both sides of the equation, all three pieces, by sine squared, which is perfectly legal, provided sine squared is not 0. So here I'm showing that sine squared is being divided into all three terms. Uh, again, as long as sine squared is not zero, this is perfectly legal. Well, look at what sine squared divided by sine squared is. Think about what cosine squared divided by sine squared is, and think about 1 over sine squared is. 
and that yields the second Pythagorean identity that 1 plus cotangent squared is cosecant squared because sine squared divided by sine squared is 1, cosine squared divided by sine squared is cotangent squared, and 1 over sine squared is cosecant squared. That's your second Pythagorean identity, but it also yields two more. So there's that second Pythagorean identity, 1 plus cotangent squared is equal to cosecant squared. And then just as we did before with sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1, I'm going to show you two more identities off of this one. By using subtraction, uh, if I subtract 1 from both sides, I get cotangent squared is equal to cosecant squared minus 1. If I subtract cotangent squared from both sides, I get 1 equals cosecant squared minus cotangent squared. These three are probably the least used of all the Pythagorean identities. Well, we have one more Pythagorean identity to discover, and so this time we're going to divide all three pieces, both sides of the equation, by cosine squared, and we're going to see what this yields. So we divide all, both sides by cosine squared, and we've got sine squared divided by cosine squared, cosine squared divided by cosine squared, and 1 over cosine squared. And that gives us our third and final Pythagorean identity. Sine squared divided by cosine squared is tangent squared, cosine squared divided by cosine squared is 1 and 1 over cosine squared is secant squared. And there's your third and final Pythagorean identity. Oh, but we don't stop there, do we? We use subtraction to yield two more of these. So if you subtract 1 from both sides, tangent squared equals secant squared minus 1, or if you subtract tangent squared from both sides, 1 is equal to secant squared minus tangent squared. And we use these on occasion. Really, number 1 is the, the 3 that I had on that first one are the, are the most popular. And then these get used on occasion. Uh, the, the ones I had in the middle, uh, we don't see those too often. And so let's wrap this up. Well, we have some more problems to do, but we'll wrap up the fund fundamental identities. So we had I started this out by talking about the three different groupings, the reciprocals, the tangent, cotangents, and the Pythagorean identities. And there they are, the reciprocals, the tangent functions, tangent identities, and the Pythagorean identities. And those Pythagorean identities, remember, each of those three each yield two more. But sine squared plus cosine squared equals one, and plus the two more of those derive, those are your big three right there. Let's play around with them. So we use the identities to solve, well, identities. And an identity really means it's true always. So I'm giving you an identity here. I'm, showing, I'm saying that tangent theta times cotangent theta is always equal to one, no matter what angle you pick. Now that, there's a caveat, provided we don't get a division by zero error. And so what we're going to do is show this is a true statement. Now we're only going to work the left side of the equation, or sometimes it's referred to as the left side of the street. We're not going to work the right side. You can, in identities, do that. The ones we're going to provide for you will only work the left side. Also, I want to work straight down the page. I don't want to wrap around right to left. And here's your big hint, 99 times out of 100, turn everything into sine and cosine, and do 7th grade math or Algebra 1. And I'm telling you, it'll work for you almost every time. So let me show you how we're going to prove that tangent times cotangent is always 1. And there's more than one way to do it, but I, I'm, I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to turn tangent into sine over cosine, and cotangent into cosine over sine. And notice I don't write the right side down. I just leave an equal sign there. And now I'm going to multiply. And I notice the signs cancel. And the cosines cancel. Now I should have a little ones there. I just didn't write them in. And then we end up with 1 over 1 and 1 over 1, which I show as 1 over 1. Yeah, this might have been one too many steps. Uh, I must have had room or something. What is 1 divided by 1? And 1 over 1 is 1. And look, the left side looks just like the right side. And I notice I always write that. This is how all of my identities look. I write the problem down. I turn. I go straight down the page. I turn everything to sine and cosines and I solve it out. You know, we could have rewritten cotangent as 1 over tangent. That would have been perfectly legal. Tangent times 1 over co 1 over tangent would have been 1 also. There's more than one way to do these identities, but you're going to do good math. You're going to go straight down the page, and your last line, this is key, the last line always shows the left side looks just like the right side. Don't skip any steps. Let's do another one. So I've got cosine, or I'm sorry, i got sine 3 theta, cotangent 3 theta equals cosine 3 theta. I want to show that's true for all values of theta. Don't let the 3's bug you out. We're not going to factor those out. They just go along for the ride. So I'm going to write sine 3 theta as sine 3 theta over 1. Cotangent is cosine over sine. And look, the 3 theta just go along for the ride. And now I'm going to multiply. Let's see what happens. Well, the sine 3 theta's cancel out. I should have wrote, should have wrote little 1's there, but I didn't. 
And we're left with cosine 3 theta equals cosine 3 theta. Look, I went straight down the page. I turned everything into sine and cosines. And I did basic 7th grade math, multiplied fractions. And I got the left side to look just like the right side. Your last line has to, has to close the case, has to, has to make, it, make it true. Let's do another one. Let's verify the identity by transforming the left side into the right side. Now this one is cotangent plus tangent is going to equal cosecant times secant. And we're probably going to have to end up with a common denominator here somewhere. And I know that's a four-letter word to a lot of students, common denominator. So I only work the left side. I leave the right side alone. I turn cotangent into cosine over sine. I turn tangent into sine over cosine. Again, 99 times out of 100, turn everything into sine and cosines. So now we need a common denominator. And our only common denominator is going to be sine cosine. So for the first fraction, I multiply top and bottom by cosine over cosine. And for the second fraction, I multiply the top and bottom by sine over sine. So we get cosine squared plus sine squared all over sine cosine. And then you ask yourself, what do I do with cosine squared plus sine squared? And you go back to your Pythagorean identities. And it is the basic Pythagorean identity. I'm going to replace cosine squared plus sine squared with 1. So that leaves us with 1 over sine theta cosine theta. And I look back up there, and I, I'm looking at cosecant theta secant theta. And so what I'm going to do is split this fraction up. You, you've spent your whole life to this point putting fractions together. I'm going to split this fraction into the product of two fractions, but it's got to stay equivalent. And so that's going to be 1 over sine times 1 over cosine. And look, 1 times 1 is 1. Sine theta times cosine theta is still sine cosine theta. So it's equivalent, but we have a new look. And that wraps it up, because 1 over sine is cosecant, 1 over cosine is secant, and that's what we were going towards. This is an identity. As long as you don't have a division by zero error, you can use any angle you want, and cotangent theta plus tangent theta will equal cosecant theta times secant theta. It goes straight down the page. When I'm done, I show the left side is exactly the same as the right side. That's how I want to see these. All right. Now, this one I want to show the left side is exactly the same as the right side, no matter what angle I pick as long as I don't get a division by zero error. There's more than one way to do it. You could FOIL, or you could do some substitution. So I've elected to do some substitution. And I've got 1 minus sine squared is cosine squared. That's one of the basic Pythagorean identities. And 1 plus tangent squared, I'm just going to turn that into 1 plus sine squared over cosine squared. And so I'm not going to FOIL. Now what I'm going to do is distribute. I'm going to distribute that cosine squared. And when I do that, I get cosine squared times 1 is, well, cosine squared. And cosine squared times sine squared over cosine squared is sine squared, because the cosine squareds cancel out. Hey, cosine squared plus sine squared, I know what that is. And that's 1. So no matter what I do on this one, no matter what angle I pick, this will always come out to be 1. You know, even to look back up at this, had I foiled this, we'd have still gotten here eventually. Uh, probably the same number of lines. There's usually more than one way to do these identities correctly. And we'll accept good math. We always accept good math. Hey, we got another one here. I've got cosine squared times the quantity secant squared minus 1. Uh, I hope that's always equal to sine squared. And again, there are more than one way to do this one. We could turn everything into sine and cosines. We can distribute. We can do some uh, substitution. We have choices here. Let's see what I decided to do. So I left the cosine squared alone. A secant squared, I turned that into 1 over cosine squared. So that's the only change I made here. And I'm now going to distribute the cosine squared and see what I get. And when I do that, cosine squared times 1 over cosine squared is 1. Uh, cosine squared times negative 1 is negative cosine squared. And oh my gosh, what is 1 minus cosine squared? Go back to your Pythagorean identities. And it's equal to sine squared. So sine squared equals sine squared. Notice we came straight down the page. We did good math. And the left side looks just like the right side. Well, here we got another one. And I think our best choice on this one is to FOIL. Uh, what is that? Last, outside, inside, first, something like that. So let's FOIL and see what we get. So we FOIL this, and we get 1 plus cosine, and then negative cosine minus cosine squared. And, you know, this is the difference of squares. We probably could have uh, just written 1 minus cosine squared. But I went ahead and wrote it all out. And so cosine minus cosine cancels out, and we get 1 minus cosine squared. And 1 minus cosine squared is equal to sine squared. And so we did it. We have sine squared equals sine squared. 
you always finish by showing the left side looks just like the right side. Hi, right, we got another one here, and I'm doing this one just to demonstrate that, that theta over 2 shouldn't freak you out. Uh, as long as they all have theta over 2 in them, they just go along for the ride. And so what is our first move going to be here to turn the left side into the right side? Well, you spent your whole life putting fractions together. This one I split up. So I made it sine over sine plus cosine over sine and common denominators. So I could go back up. I'm not going to do this. You could combine this into one fraction. And so you spent your whole life putting fractions together. And now you have to learn how to tear them apart. That's equivalent to what we just had. And sine over sine is equal to 1, and cosine over sine is equal to cotangent, and we get 1 plus cotangent equals 1 plus cotangent. And so the theta over 2 had nothing to do with this. As long as they all had theta over 2, then we can do what we're going to do. Uh, here's a good example of one where you want to turn everything into sine and cosines and maybe do a, a multiply by the reciprocal of the denominator and see what happens. So I turn secant into 1 over cosine. I turn tangent into sine over cosine. I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal of the denominator, and this will be over with in a hurry. And we end up with 1 over cosine times, take the reciprocal of the denominator, cosine over sine. The cosines are going to cancel out, leaving us with 1 over sine. And I think we all know what 1 over sine is and the dismount. Yes, 1 over sine is cosecant, and we showed cosecant equals cosecant. This is a good example of how I want to see the homework completed. Uh, you're going to go straight down the page. The last line will show the left side looks just like the right side, and we're going to leave the right side alone. Well, that's it for Lesson 4. Now, there is no online homework for Lesson 4. Uh, you'll find the assigned problems listed on the assignment sheet on the course webpage. Please complete the assignment on paper and get it to your instructor. You can scan it or take a picture and send it as an email. You can drop it off at your instructor's office or you can fax it. Uh, you can also use Pony Express if you can find a horse. Just make sure it's readable. Some of you take photos of stuff and then we can't grade it. And uh, the, the deadline then would be the day after this lesson has been assigned.